Alrighty, number three. Uh, we have suppose x of t is a solution to the initial value problem x prime is equal to x times cosine squared t uh, and x of 0 is equal to 1. So this is like the point 0, 1 uh, in tx. Um, anyway, so show that our solution x of t is must be greater than 0 for all t for which x is defined. Okay, so number one thing that we have to do is um, show that the uniqueness theorem applies because without the uniqueness theorem we're not guaranteed anything we're not guaranteed any kind of unique solution right so in order to uh, set about doing that we have to look at our ODE first okay and we see that it is already in uh, normal form because we have we can write the right side as a function of t and x right and x is equal to uh, x prime okay so we have normal form and we also have um, this thing here is continuous for the whole tx plane Right, so f of tx is continuous for the whole uh, tx plane, uh, and partial f partial x is equal to um, cosine squared t simply, which also is continuous for the whole tx plane. So we can state that here. Um, so we have normal form is satisfied. Okay, that's our ODEs in the right form. We also have f of t comma x and uh, partial f partial x are continuous. I'll abbreviate continuous on the tx plane, okay? And at the same time, we can also knock out that third um, hypothesis, which is which contains our initial value, right? So which contains uh, our initial condition of 0, 1, okay? tx there, alrighty? So we could say, so the uniqueness theorem, uniqueness theorem, applies. Alrighty? So we've kind of just set up our problem here. So now we have the basis for what we can um, what we can build our future arguments off of in our conclusions, okay? So just a, a refresher, our x prime is equal to x times cosine squared t and our initial condition is x of 0 is equal to 1. And we're supposed to be proving, so we're supposed to prove or show, prove slash show, that um, x of t must stay above 0 um, for all t. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So first of all, what we can note is that from this OD, just looking at it, x sub 1 of t, I'm just going to say it's sub 1 because it has to be a different function, right? We can name it like z of t or something. Um, this, this function here, this constant function, is already a solution just to the ODE, right? Because if you look at it, the, the first derivative of 0 is 0. And on the right side, we have 0 cosine squared t, which is equal to 0. So that satisfies the ODE, um, and not even mentioning like this, this initial condition, okay? We're not looking at the particular solution. We're just looking, okay, this solution could be a solution to the ODE, right? So graphically, what we're looking at is something like this. So if we had, here's our tx plane, okay? We have 1, 2, 1, 2, um, okay? So we have something like this, and our tx plane, so this thing here, the t axis, which is x, x is equal to 0, so x sub 1 of t is equal to 0, this is a solution, all right? And our uniqueness theorem applies, remember that. So let's keep that in mind. Here's our initial condition. I'll just label it here. So 0, 1, this point here, this is the initial condition, which I just graphed, that point there, right? So by the uniqueness theorem, remember the graph, well, anyways, if you watch the concepts video, you'll remember the graph. But um, anyways, so here's our solution which must cross through that initial condition and it has to stay above the other solution right it can't dip down and go like that because two solutions aren't allowed to cross two distinct solutions that is okay so therefore our uh, our solution which is this one that I'm just graphing randomly which it probably doesn't look like that but anyways um, this solution therefore x of t must be greater than zero and we'll say why here so here's like a more um, explicit like proof or showing. So since we're going to note that x sub 1 of t is equal to 0 is a solution to the ODE, to the given ODE, right? Um, since our x, well, 0 prime is equal to 0 times cosine squared of t, which is equal to 0. So I was just showing, like, what I just did here, okay? All of that work, okay? And then we also have that x sub 1 of 0, 
So this thing, when you plug in a zero, we just get a zero, okay? Which happens to be less than uh, one, which is equal to our x of zero, whatever x is. This is our, like, the solution we're looking for, x of t, right? So because it's less than this, um, then that means that our solution, I'll just label it our solution, that means that our solution, uh, which is given, which is determined by this initial condition, must stay above the other solution, right? So our solution, x of t, must stay above, stay above the other one, above x sub 1 of t, which is equal to 0. So, another so, um, then that means that our x of t must be greater than 0 for all t, okay? which are for all t meaning like in between negative infinity up to infinity, okay? So that's like what I just um, explained and everything. All of this is like a pretty informal proof kind of thing. But it would be um, pretty much sufficient for any professor, I would say, unless your professor wants you to do a more rigorous proof, which I'll show you uh, on the next slide. Okay, so here's an alternate method uh, this is more rigorous, okay? So let's say, again, we have our, our uh, initial value problem, and we're supposed to prove that, well, here, let me write that out first. So x of 0 is equal to 1, and then so we're going to prove that x of t, our x of t, must be greater than 0, okay? So the first thing, this is called um, a proof by contradiction because we start by contradicting ourselves. We're, we start by declaring the opposite, basically. So by contradiction... Um, if there exists um, a t1, t sub 1, okay, such that the following is true, such that our x of t is the opposite. So that would be less than or equal to 0, because that's the opposite of greater than, pretty much. It includes everything else, right? So such that this is true um, by the intermediate value theorem, intermediate value theorem, we're, we're doing like a throwback to Thai school calculus here, um, there must be, there must be um, a t2, so another t value, uh, in between, in between 0 and t sub 1, such that x of that t2 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's just stop here and think about that. So I'm just saying, okay, so if there's some t value such that our x, our solution, goes below or is equal to 0, then by the, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be some other t value in between 0, which is here, and um, our t1, such that this thing, that our, that our function is equal to 0. So that's just saying, like, okay, here's t um, and here's x, right? Let's say here's t1 and here's 0, right? And at 0, we're at 1. Okay, because that's the point. That's our initial condition up here, right? That point there. And then at t1, uh, we said that our solution goes below or is equal to zero or something. So I'll just put it here. So somewhere in between, there must be a t2 such that our x of t crosses the t-axis, right? Such that it equals the value of our function is equal to zero. Okay, so that's all that that's saying. Okay, we can kind of cross that out for now. Alrighty, and then, um, so we can form... Uh, we can form, well, I, I'll just write that out. So we can form a new new uh, initial value problem, uh, which is given by x prime is equal to x times cosine squared t, x of t2 is equal to 0. Because this is another value, right? So t2 and then is equal to 0. So this is a new initial value problem, and we see that um, a solution to this guy could be x of t. Uh, well, x sub 1, let's say. x sub 1 of t is equal to 0. Is a solution to um, the ODE, to the, well, to the initial value problem, right? Uh, to this initial value problem, which is, I'll just denote it by a star, okay? So this is our new initial value problem, which is denoted by the star, okay? Which, as we see, if we plug in, um, our 0 into that for t equals 0, we get 0 still, right? Which this thing is not equal to 1. So this is not equal to 1. 
not equal to 1, okay? Which is which was our original initial condition. Remember this one up here? This is the original initial value problem. And since these two do not match, then we have that. Um, so since this isn't true by assuming what we did in the beginning, so that means that our assumption must be the opposite exactly. So that would be x of t must be greater than 0 then uh, for all t for which x is defined. X is defined, okay? Alrighty, and there you have it, the more rigorous proof um, as to why our solution x of t must stay above 0. Alrighty, so that wraps up our practice problems video um, for this section, 2.7 uh, existence and uniqueness of solutions. I hope that helps and good luck on your homework.